Hi, my name is Martin and I'd like to show you how to do motion charts on the basis of corpus data from the Corpus of Historical American English, this one. Motion charts are graphs like this one that represent some linguistic phenomenon and allow you to explore how that phenomenon changed over time. So here you see verbs moving about the screen, changing over time. Right. So, um, how does this work? How do you create motion charts with diachronic corpus data? Um, conceptually, these motion charts are kind of like flipbooks. So you use a corpus that represents identical kinds of text across multiple periods of time, things like the koha. You select a phenomenon and create a visualization for each corpus period. So you end up with many pictures. And then you can view them in sequence, just like a flipbook. What do you need for that? You need the corpus, obviously. Um, that's available online for free. You need some spreadsheet software. You need R and the Googlevis R package. We'll get to that. And um, you can download from my webpage an R workspace that has some sample files in it already. So you can start plotting right away, more or less. Okay, so you should have some version of R on your computer and um, clear its memory. And then install the package Google this if you don't have it already. You call the library Google this to load it. And um, here are the sample data files that are included in the R workspace that I just mentioned. One of them is called may versus might. One is called noun versus verb and the third one is called complements. And here we have them as text files, but they're already data structures in the R workspace. So if you check what's in memory, it says complements, may might, and noun verb, these three data frames that we're going to work with. If you look what's in these data frames, uh, these are the first six lines of the data frame may might. You see it has six columns. Uh, the first one is the one with the time stamps, the temporal information. So here we have six verbs from the 1870s, accept, accompany, account, acquire, add, and admire. And we see how frequently per million words they occur with may and with might. So accept occurs more often with may than it occurs with might. There is a difference and this is the combined frequency of this column and this column. Okay. Right, um, this is the function that you use to create the data structures for your plots, um, GVIS motion chart. And as arguments, it takes a data frame, in this case, MayMite, and um, it asks you to specify the ID variable. So what uh, variable are you analyzing? And we're analyzing the words, of course. We want to find out something about the words. And as a second thing, it needs the time variable, right? And here we have our decade column. So these two variables you need to specify. And these other variables, the thing will make sense of all by itself. Okay, so once you have this, you can just use the plot function and plot this may might visualization. And um, yeah, so here I have it. And as color, I want to use the difference. And for size, I want to use frequency. So what's yellowish is more associated with may, and what's bluish is more associated with might. There's may on the x-axis, might on the y-axis. And we see that, for instance, say in the 1870s is the most frequent verb associated with may and do is the most frequent one associated with might. And then you can hit play and see how all of this changed over time. So some verbs stay very constant, like lead is just a rock here. Um, but others, they change. And over time, we see that may becomes less frequent, right? So things is getting, it's getting very crowded on this side of the graph. All right, mm. okay, 
Big question, uh, where does the data come from? How do you get the data from Koha into a format that R can understand and plot? Okay, so you use the Koha corpus and um, let's go there. Okay, so this is what the interface looks like. And it has this function compare, where you can actually compare the collocational behavior of words. And I can just type in may and might here, and I want to compare verbal collocates. Okay, so just the infinitives. And I only want to compare the infinitives towards the right of the words may and might. Okay, so I'm choosing a two word span here. Let's see what that gives us. Um, and I want to compare things in the 2000s. Hit search and um, okay, it's doing something. There it is. Okay, so in the 2000s, the most typical word for may is bless. Then we have boost, decrease, stem, exacerbate. And for might, we have of, faint, explode, lay, lift, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the basic data that we're going to use. And I'm uh, going to head, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste all of this into a spreadsheet. So the raw data that you're using looks something like this. Okay, um, not pretty yet, but you have to format it a little bit, right? Uh, the information is all there. We have the words, how often these words occur with may, how often they occur with might, and some difference score that we can use. Okay? Mm, so you want to format all of this and do some copy and pasting until it looks like this. You have one column for the decade, so this is all data from the 1860s. You have one column for the words, one column that has the frequency per million words for may, the frequencies per million words for might, the diff score from the results, and then the combined frequency, which I like to use for bubble size. Okay, uh, some pitfalls to keep in mind here is that you need to manually identify each item with its decade, okay? It doesn't come with that information. If you look at the um, spreadsheet, Somewhere here you would need to make a column that says, all right, this is data from the 2000s. Okay, Done. like that. Um, don't mix up W1 and W2. So here W1 comes first, there W2 comes second. For the second half of the data, it's reversed. <clears throat> so be sure to re-reverse that. And I normalized frequencies per million words. If you look at the data, um, those are raw frequencies, but of course the decades may have different sizes. And so uh, I like to normalize the frequencies. And the COA webpage lists the period sizes. For this diff score in the data frame, I used the score value from COA, simply because it was there. And sometimes you need to take care of doublets, where you have multiple rows with the same decade and the same word. Those need to be removed, lest R becomes really, really confused. Okay, um, I think I'm going to stop here, and in the next video, I will tell you about some more ideas.